Hello everyone, I'm Rosphere, and MMORPGs suck, and in this video, I'm going to explain why. Let's assume that you don't know what an MMORPG is. So, an MMORPG is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Now, there's two parts there, so the first part is massively multiplayer online. A massively multiplayer online game is pretty much any game that is massively multiplayer where you have a large number of players interacting with with each other simultaneously in a single world. Now, an RPG is something totally separate from that, a role-playing game. And a role-playing game is made up of a few core tenets, and that first one is storyline. So, you have a player that takes on the role of the main character and plays through the storyline, story experiencing that storyline through the main character's eyes in a in an immersive way. So that makes up the RP, the role-playing part of the RPG. Now, the G, being game, is the part of the game which is made up of the systems that you use to play through and experience the story. That would be combat, other mechanics such as stats, uh, crafting, and so on. So that makes up the RPG, and when you put MMORPG together, you end up with the massively multiplayer online role-playing game where you have a massive number of players experiencing the same RPG simultaneously. Now, experiencing an RPG storyline alongside other players simultaneously isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on how seriously the game designer or the game developer actually takes this. Now, if we look at Final Fantasy, for example, they take it very seriously in that it's a very single-player storyline going through the MMO. And it's not necessarily a bad thing because... Be the story is so good that nobody really cares, right? The no, nobody really cares that it's breaking this immersion bubble in the sense of like, um, it, it's like breaking the fourth wall in game design is putting a single player storyline within a multiplayer game. It just feels weird. So it doesn't really matter as long as your storyline is so good, but it's just the best example there is of a game that's being that's an MMO taking a single player storyline and putting it into their game. Now, if we take it to the other extreme, for example, you have games like New World just came out. It has a very loose storyline. I got to be honest, I've been playing it for over 100 hours and I still have no idea what's going on. Uh, most of the game as far as storyline doesn't make sense to me. It's more on the MMO side of the RPG uh, than RPG, right? And in my case, in my case, I think that's much worse. Uh, it's much more boring because a lot of what I'm doing. Is and I know I said I was going to stop talking about World of Warcraft and specifically Classic WoW in general, but I think this is a really good comparison is something that's in the middle of the extremely on rails experience of Final Fantasy and the disjointed odd experience that we have in New World that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, Classic WoW is somewhere in the middle of that where, say, you're going through the game and each sto each um zone has its own small little storyline in general of what's actually going on in the zone and the politics in that area and so on especially if you're paying attention to it it's actually very well written and really deep um, so it's a less on rails experience in that you can pretty much go to whatever zone that you have the level to go to you just there's no like go here do that go here do that as much as like uh, final fantasy is uh, go talk to this person, go talk to this person, go collect these things, go over here, do that, go collect this. And it just kind of runs you right through in rails the whole way through. Um, in World of Warcraft, you're kind of skipping from one set of rails to another set of rails, at least in classic. Uh, retail World of Warcraft is much more on rails and much more boring as a result, especially because the writers for the storyline in Retail World of Warcraft seem to be kind of moronic in that they have veered away from uh, relatable storylines to be told in that the past few expansions for example we've um, we've gone back in time in an alternate timeline in an alternate timeline and then come back to our current timeline and flown through space to another planet killed a god uh, or whatever it's called in World of Warcraft and or not really killed him but imprisoned him and then uh, yeah, I guess we did. I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The lore is really confusing, and we're currently in the afterlife fighting it, fighting death itself. It, like, it doesn't make sense in World of Warcraft, and it's one of the main reasons why I've quit is because the story is just so unrelatable, but that's another video entirely. So 
essentially you have those three types of MMOs where one is very loose and doesn't really uh, is kind of feels disjointed because I know New World wasn't made with storyline in mind. Um, and I don't know if that's a good idea for them to have put it in because it's really just a PvP focused MMO. And you can definitely feel that as you're playing through that it was really meant more for PvP and not PvE. And PvE was kind of an afterthought because they realized that the PvE audience is the majority of the player base. Um, and then that's not a knock against PvP players. It's just how it is. A lot of people don't really want to engage with hardcore PvP. Um, yeah, so and then you have the super on rails type of MMO like Final Fantasy Online, which does it really well, or Retail World of Warcraft, which doesn't do it. So I put together this really kind of haphazard chart in order to visualize exactly what I'm talking about and maybe help some people who haven't played these games or don't really understand what I'm talking about visually see what I'm talking about so they can kind of understand what I mean while you know when I say Final Fantasy is very much on rails. Uh, New World's really just did. <clears throat> New World feels really disjointed, and Classic WoW is on rails, but you're jumping from one set of rails to the next, right? So, uh, Final Fantasy, you have a game where you're playing very much on rails, like I said. So, you're going like this, and you're playing the game. It's all storyline, and you're going straight down, you know, in on rails, and it's like, oh, well, there's some uh, multiplayer content here for the storyline. So you play it through the dungeon. You come back down here. And then you're back on rails again and you're on rails and you're on rails and you're on rails the whole way through. And Oh look, there's some more multiplayer content. And you go back onto the main storyline and you play through and you play through and you play through until you get to the very end, which is the end game. And there's a couple basic paths that you can go through. Uh, you can do world content, which would be up here. Let's say, there's PvP and then there's PvE and you can take part in some of or all of them and that basically keeps you busy until the storyline comes together uh, for the next expansion in which all the players come back here and they start doing the same thing and they're on rails again, right? So that's kind of what I mean by uh, being on rails and uh, for most games this is really boring, especially if it's an MMO and it can be immersion breaking, especially if everybody is the hero of the story it just happens to you know be okay in Final Fantasy because, like I said before, the story is just that good that most people don't really care, including myself. The, like the game is really good, right? And then for New World, it's totally different. Um, the story for New World was placed or put in place after the fact, from what I understand, and as a result, it just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, uh, and it feels weird. It just it feels like it was tacked on top like I said before, because they wanted to attract the PvE players and ended up with a kind of a shitty storyline, right? So you're playing through the game of New World and the the storyline is so loose that you're, you're kind of doing this, right? And it feels like you're doing this and then it's like, oh, storyline. And then you go back to doing this and nothing really makes sense because all the zones are very very similar as far as what the quests are available the and then you're like oh storyline and then the same thing because you're doing all this other stuff as you're going through right and oh storyline and i haven't made it to the end game but i'm assuming that end game in this is like pvp pve crafting and I don't know what's going to happen with the expansion. I don't know what they're going to do with this game, but that's kind of how it feels, right? Like you're wandering around doing all these different things, doing chores, uh, gathering, crafting, doing all this stuff. And it's like, oh, there's a little storyline. And then you go back to doing, you know, random little shit. And it's like, oh, storyline. So that's kind of what I mean by it feels really disjointed uh, and ill-prepared, right? So for Classic World of Warcraft, if we go to this, um, it feels like you're jumping from one set of rails to the next, right? So... For Classic WoW, it's like you have your starting zone and you play through the starting zone and it has its little story and you, you make it about that far, right? And then you're presented with, you know, two or three different zones that you can go to. Uh, you don't have to go into the next starting zone. So say if you start in Northshire for a human, you don't have to go to Elwyn Forest. You can go over to the Dwarven starting area. Um, so you have other starting area or not other starting areas. Sorry, you have other areas that you can go to or you can go from you know, say this is the Dwarven starting area. Damn it. There we go. Uh, you have Elwyn Forest over here. 
you have night elves there and you can pick which one you want to go to you don't have to go to one or the other nothing's making you go do one or the other it's just one's closer so as a human let's say you went over here to north shire right or elwyn forest and you quested through there and from there you're like well elwyn's the clo or not elwyn um westfall is the next closest one so you go over here and now you're in westfall you're doing westfall storyline and then you go to red ridge and you do red ridge and then you go to darkshire and you do darkshire or duskwood and it feels like you're going from one set of rails to the next um and there's a bunch of little like pockets of you know extra quests to do that are side quests to the actual storyline of the zone and the main lore of the zone some zones don't have like a hard like quest line that you go through but a lot of them have like big quest lines that you can go through they're just not very apparent right away um and that's kind of what classic wows is and then eventually in classic wow it's gonna bother me if it's not straight in classic wow uh you get to the end game and again uh you have gathering crafting pvp pve like there's there's a few more options it feels like in classic world of warcraft you, i guess gathering and crafting can kind of be in the same boat but most of it is uh you know very similar um you know and then when the uh, burning crusade comes out you essentially go through the same thing of jumping from one set of rails to the next the only difference is you don't get to pick because it's very linear going into burning crusade you kind of lose this jumping around so burning crusade is not exactly the same right so this is uh, kind of what classic World of Warcraft looks like as far as this way that the storyline is told. And it's not really a main storyline. Like I said before, it's kind of zone by zone. Now, this bottom one here. This is kind of what I would like to see in a storyline. And I'm going to draw it out and then kind of explain it after the fact, right? So if we go here, what I would like to see in a storyline is kind of similar to what we have in New World, but without the oh storyline oh storyline i would like to see say uh for example you play the game a certain way let's say you pick uh let, let's just do it this way so you have your storyline here and you're playing the game and it kind of veers off and it does some squigglies right uh and then you end here and that's where you know you have your extras kind of like everything else now Let's just uh, randomly pick a different color here. I don't know. We'll just go with different shades of pink. So then you have a player that plays the game slightly differently or picked a slightly different class, and you're going like this, right? And you kind of have a similar ending, but not. You know? And then we'll go even darker. Um and then again, you have another player that plays the game, some you know, a little bit different, getting a you know slightly different experience, maybe having a different endpoint even, and then they have their their extras that they get at the end there. So that's kind of what I would like to see for an MMO, because it takes the storyline less seriously and puts more of the storytelling onto the player and how they experience the actual world. Now I'm going to explain this in a little bit more depth here in a second. Now, before I give you an example of what a game would look like if it was structured in the way of those last set of squiggly lines, I'm going to give you an example of why I think that the games like Final Fantasy Online, like Classic World of Warcraft, and like uh, New World are not exactly doing the best job at being an RPG or an MMORPG. And so that's simply because... In an MMORPG, it's much more interesting if the devs let the players tell the story to them and not the other way around. Now, it doesn't really work in games like Final Fantasy because it has such a single-player heritage going into the MMO uh, that it makes more sense for it to be single-player. And again, I'm not attacking Final Fantasy. It's just the best single-player MMO out there. Uh to get you know use as an example because like, like i said before the storyline is just that good so the best example of a game that comes close to what i'm talking about is classic world of warcraft again because every server in that game had its own storyline for example it had six phases within each phase there was uh, players of note that did certain things 
guilds of note that did certain things, people that you'd recognize, um, and those were recognizable across basically the server on both factions, uh, you know, things that people kept track of. You could literally write a history of for each server and put down individual players' names, the events that took place, why, when they took place, who did what, all these other things, and actually come up with a historical like story to tell for each server. And that's what's the most that's the most interesting part about Classic World of Warcraft. It's not necessarily the storyline of the game, because the storyline in Classic WoW is more the lore, not the story being told. And as I've said in previous videos, um, there's a very big difference between lore and story, because lore is the history of the world, story is what's happening now, right? And in an MMORPG, it's much more interesting if the player is telling the dev the story and not the other way around. All right, so getting to the example of a game that would be like that squiggly lines that I had said before, um, it's going to be kind of similar to a game that has, was made in the past. I think it's called Star Wars Galaxies. Uh, I'm not 100% sure because I never played it, but essentially um, what I'm thinking of for this game, and again, if anybody uh, decides to take this idea and go make a game with it, uh, I don't mind. You can have it. Just uh, give me a job. That's all I got to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, beyond that, uh, so this idea would be set in a medieval world, right? So you're in medieval times. Um, everybody starts out as a peasant. And when you create your character, it's similar to like um, New World, where everybody starts their character. There's no class selection. It's just gender selected, right? So you can just select your character, customize it, and then you hop into the game and you start playing. And depending on where you go with your skills, and the direction that you take your character is, you know, how your character develops, right? So let's say you become uh, a farmer, which is something that you could do. You don't have to actually go out and do combat. Um, the world would be filled with monsters and things like that. And specifically in this world, uh, I'm thinking werewolves and vampires, right? <clears throat> and the vampires and the werewolves are warring factions that uh, don't like each other. And you can actually become a werewolf or a vampire, but you can't create a werewolf or a vampire from the start. And when you create your character, your character may not, may not necessarily be able to become one because it doesn't possess the inherent abilities to actually be one. And those uh, inherent abilities will be known to nobody other than the game itself. So when you create your character, you won't know. You have to play the game and find out. Um, maybe you'll be able to be a vampire. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll be a werewolf. Maybe you won't, right? Maybe you'll be neither. Um, so getting into that, let's say you decide to be a farmer. Um, and in being a farmer, you grow food, uh, you gather it, you collect you know, food, you sell your food in a stall, make money. Uh, and over time, you start making more and more money. You can expand your farm. Uh, and eventually, maybe you don't like your farm. You sell your farm. You go buy an inn, and you can be an innkeeper and you know sell ale and things like that because there's going to be people and adventurers coming back who need to de-stress and they'll need to go to an inn to do that and you can provide that service uh similar to um again that star wars game uh i don't know what you could own or how that game worked exactly but i know there was like a stress system where you could go to a cantina and de-stress your character in order to go back out into the world and there was dancers and professions and things like that so uh, everybody starts out as that peasant and you start playing through the game, right? Everybody's trajectory through the game is different. Um, maybe instead of being a farmer, you wanted to be a priest. So you go join the priesthood and the priesthood has its own small little storyline. Um, you work your way up through the ranks. You can become a paladin. Maybe you become a knight uh, through that. You can be, you know, to be a tank or a healer. Um, you can just stay a priest for a healer. You could be a paladin for a healer, whatever, you know, maybe... Uh, you go through this path that takes you into becoming a druid um, and you become one with nature and you have all these different animals following you and uh, you know you have different herbal like um, heals and supplements that you can give to players to buff them and uh, all this other stuff then um, maybe you like using bows so you decide to get a bow at the start and you go out hunting and you become a really good hunter and skinner and you provide those to uh, you know, people who 
instead of becoming an adventurer, decided to stay more in town and be more, you know, craftsmen. They're tanning leather and creating leather goods for like medium, you know, style armor. Uh, the tanned leather is also being sold to people who decided to become a blacksmith. Um, and those blacksmiths are using the leather for like the handles on like their legendary weapons that they're making and so on and so forth. Uh, and through a complicated system, you know, some players are able to become vampires, which obviously are extremely powerful, immortal beings and people want to hunt them down. Um, but you get all these different benefits from being a va vampire as well. And it's not initially, um, how do I put it? Uh, it wouldn't be initially, uh, apparent to other players within that world that you were a vampire just by looking at you because you're just hanging out at night. You look kind of like a human. Uh, you're not necessarily feeding on people all the time, right? It's not something that you have to do every day uh, or all the time. It's just something that maybe you need to do that to maintain yourself once a week. So you have to trick somebody out to come out into the wilderness and then you feed on them out in the wilderness to maintain your uh, superhuman strength and all this other stuff that you get uh, by doing that. Also, uh, maybe you lose stats or even going out during the daytime in game could be harmful. You know, I don't, I don't know exactly. Like, obviously there's a lot of holes in the plot here. There's a lot of holes in the game design. I'm just coming up with this kind of off the top of my head, uh, for the most part. And then werewolves would be very similar. Uh, maybe you're out adventuring, your character has the capability to become a werewolf and you don't know it and you're attacked by some you know beastly wolf uh out in the middle of uh you know the wilderness while you're hunting and in that you get this infection that uh nearly kills your character uh you know permanently or whatever i don't know exactly but nearly kills you or does something to you um and then through that you become a werewolf and uh once a month in game your character uncontrollably transform transforms into a werewolf and uh Everybody becomes hostile. You can choose to run away from them. You can choose to kill people like in the city, all this other stuff. Um, you know, but by doing that, you're going to expose yourself to the vampire hunters and the, or the werewolf hunters, I should say, um, because killing a werewolf or a vampire would obviously bring massive rewards and, you know, gold to the people who did it. Um, and when you died as a werewolf or a vampire, that death would be permanent. If you died as just a regular person, it wouldn't necessarily be permanent, right? <clears throat> so that's kind of what I'm thinking as far as like the game goes. There would still be end game PvP uh, to an extent that would be more or less the people versus the vampires and the werewolves. Um, there would still be PvP, PvE, sorry, end game PvE, like dungeon crawling, uh, things like that. You know, ten man groups um, delving into hunt NPC vampires or NPC werewolves. Uh, all this other stuff. Um, so I think that kind of game would be much more interesting than what we currently have. And because of the way that's structured, it doesn't necessarily fit a single player story. It's more of you're a part of this world. You are an adventurer in this world and your story is what matters to you and to your friends and the people around you. Right. And if you could become popular enough on the server, your story your individual story of your character becomes known throughout the entire server, right? Like if you're a really notorious vampire that's been around for a long time and is super powerful, is fed on hundreds of people, um, your, your character is likely going to be well known throughout the server. And even today, for example, like there's live streamers and, you know, YouTubers and things like that. You're going to be caught on tape, you know, recorded caught in 4k, literally, uh, likely feeding on somebody or doing something vampire or something werewolf. Um, and then, you know, people are going to be pointing it out, you know, following you on discord and Reddit, like this is the person, uh, sort of metagaming the RP, for example, but you know, that can just add to it. it makes it harder for the people who are vampires and werewolves and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, like that kind of game where the end is not necessarily the same for everybody and the story of the server is created by what happens to all the players and how those players interact with each other. Like that is much more interesting to me. And I think to most people than they realize because something like that is just really intriguing to play through. Um, because you're not logging in to do your dailies, right? You're not logging in 
to uh, go and do your world quest. You're not logging in to go. Um, I don't even know what you, you're not logging in to do random like uh, war faction wars in um, in New World, right? To try and capture more territory so you can you know put taxes on people and make more money. Like I understand what they're doing there. It's just not as interesting because. And it is player driven story there, but uh, it's just not as in depth as it is if you were to have a system like Star Wars Galaxies or similar to what I'm talking about now, because your path starts and ends basically where you want it to go, and your story is what matters, not the game story. And in an MMORPG, that is what makes it good your story, not the game story. And that's why I say MMORPGs suck, because none of them do this. And it drives me nuts because they don't do it, and it would be so cool if they did, and so many people would play this, you know, games like this. Just I could just imagine the number of people that would play a game like this. Now, I'm just rambling at this point, but <clears throat> I think you understand what I'm saying. Uh, the player's story is the most important, not the game story. So, yeah, before I keep going, uh, if you like this video, make sure to like subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.